So in this uh, video, I'm going to explain how to evaluate a source that you find on the internet and determine if it's credible enough to use in your research paper. So first off, I want to explain why um, in academia do we prefer for you to find sources from academic databases. And the reason is because that what you find through an academic database like EBSCO, which you're being instructed to use for your uh, sources journals, um, is that information published in these uh, databases has usually been vetted by a publisher for accuracy. So it gives, uh, it means that you can trust the source. Whereas with Google or anything you find on the internet, uh, there's no guarantee that that source has been vetted for accuracy. So you're left to do that vetting on your own. Um, so academic databases are usually preferred for all of your academic papers. Um, however, the reason I'm showing you how to find information online is that not all information can be found in an academic database. So sometimes you do have to use the internet. All right, one point I want to go into before jumping into the internet is um, a scholarly peer-reviewed source. So a scholarly source uh, goes through a process of peer review, which is where uh, the source is read by experts in that field that verify that the information you, uh, in that source is accurate. So usually the source will be a journal article or a book. Um, in academia, the scholarly source is considered the most reliable type of source uh, that there is. Uh, the source is usually written by an academic researcher or another expert in their field, and the source usually covers the research that this person has done uh, to learn more, more about uh, whatever topics are of interest in their area of expertise. Now, um, only academic journals and publishers have a peer review process. This is the process where that uh, source is sent out to those experts and is read by them and verified. Now, news organizations, um, especially like um, media outlets, uh, they may employ fact checking, but that's not at the same level as peer review. Usually the fact checking is done by maybe a senior editor, maybe someone with a little knowledge of the, of the field, but it's not as in depth as peer review. So it's not considered at the same level um, as uh, in academia that it might be by the general public. So scholarly sources are mostly found in library databases and that's why it's preferred for you to use uh, OCLU's databases, but some scholarly sources do exist online. So just because you find it online doesn't mean it's not scholarly. Now, I wanna make it clear, you're not required to use scholarly sources in either of your research papers you're just required to use credible sources. So five credible sources for essay one, six for essay two, and in essay one, three of these sources must be from the OHU library database. Um, and for essay two, four of them must be from the OHU database. But I just want to explain to you what the scholarly source is and show you how you can identify a scholarly source um, in the database is basically look at this icon. If it says academic journal, it's a scholarly source. If it says periodical, then it's not going to be a scholarly source. So in this case, we see it's in the coach and athletic director. That's the name of the magazine. Up here, the name of the magazine was uh, nursing management. Um, so this will be something um, maybe that's written for like a trade, so for a certain industry or business. And it might very well be accurate, but it's not quite the same level there. They're probably not going to have the peer review process that an academic journal does. Um, news, so this is going to be something from um, a news outlet, which is not always um, verifiable. In this case, it's a Chronicle of Higher Education, which is a news organization, but um, the people who write for it are almost always educators or people who have expertise in the field. So this would actually be an okay news outlet. But this is the easy way to determine if a source is academic, because it'll say academic journal. All right. Uh, how to determine if a source is credible. I'm going to give you three things to look for. One, the author, the text, and the publisher. So for the author, consider, does this author have degrees related to the uh, field they are talking about? Um, does the author maybe have personal experience or work experience related to the writing? So if you're doing a paper on gun control and if you um, have an article written in a newspaper about someone who was in... Um, school shooting or a workplace shooting and they're giving first-hand testimony of it, 
it maybe does give them some knowledge or personal experience that they um, can contribute to that topic. All right. Um, is the author a well-known authority on the subject they're writing on? Okay. Do they have a reputation um, as being credible? Second is the text itself. Does the author reference where they got their information? Either through citations, like APA style that you're learning, or if it's online through hyperlinks, do they link to the websites or articles that they're using for their information? Um, is the information in what, um, is the information that they've given you, does it match what other publications have already said? So if you're seeing in a lot of articles that um, they're saying, a, but this one article is saying B, then maybe find out why is this one article saying B? Are they really accurate? Um, or are they just having a different perspective? All right, lastly, the publisher. Does the publisher have a good reputation? Um, does the publisher employ re uh, peer review or fact checking? And then does the publisher have an agenda or bias? Okay, now I wanna point out that even if they do have an agenda or bias to their information, it doesn't mean the information is inaccurate. It just means you may want to verify to make sure that they are not putting so much of a slant on it that um, you're not getting the whole picture of that information. So just because it has a bias doesn't mean it's ruled out, but just be aware of that. So what I wanted to do now is walk you through six articles or sources that I found online and explain if I would count them as credible or not. And I found all of these by just Googling teamwork. So for this first source, I Googled teamwork and this article looked interesting, the importance of teamwork. We all know teamwork is great, but why? All right, so immediately when I'm looking for a noticing, all right, Bright HR, I don't really know who this is, but I see a phone number. Okay, that's uh, kind of a little bit of a tip off. And if I keep scrolling through the article immediately, I noticed, okay, there's no author mentioned up at the top, but sometimes they're at the bottom. There are a couple links, but they just seem to be to terms or maybe other parts of the website. And I'm not seeing anything, other sources or links. And then there's no author or date or anything on the bottom, but at the bottom of the website, I'm getting the impression this is for a business. Okay, so I'm not gonna consider it credible. Um, because I don't know who the author is, I don't know where they got their information, I don't know anything about this company. So it just seems like a publicity article for them. So I'm going to say it's not credible. In a second article, right, um, this is, looks confused, but it's by HR Magazine. All right, so that sounds like a group, organization that would deal with things in the workplace. So that kind of is lending itself to credibility. I do see this join now or sign in and like a card and phone call. That's not bothering to me too much because most uh, like news organizations, magazines, newspapers, uh, they require subscriptions. So that's not off putting. I like that I see this author right here. I'm actually gonna click on her name to see what I can learn about her. So while this loads, remember some of the things we wanna learn or see about the author is does she have any degrees related to the field that she's talking about? Does she maybe have any workplace um, experience that would be relevant, um, or personal experience of some kind? That's what we'll be looking for. And that's not going through, so I'm gonna click on it again, see if it comes up. All right, well, it's not, but I did this earlier. And I found out she did not have a degree in business uh, management. She does write for this magazine, but she had like an English major. So she didn't have a business uh, degree or anything like that. So that's immediately making me pause. But I'm gonna finish going through the article um, and see what I find. So I do see some things that look like citations, links to a book um, that could be good, um, to this project of Aristotle. Um, some other things. So she does have some references in here, which can be good. Um, to see if, does she have a list of sources at the end? And she does not. Um, she lists some terms, but there's nothing else. So because she doesn't have a degree in the area, I'm putting the source as kind of iffy. The magazine seems good. The publisher seems good. There's a little bit of citing in the article, but because she doesn't have a degree um, I'm putting this so-so. Maybe I want to see if there's someone else 
a better source out there or verify her information. All right, the next uh, source I'm going to look at is kind of a political or activist organization. So I'm Brady, United Against Gun Violence. All right, so immediately I'm seeing that they have an agenda. That's okay, they're in front about it. All right, facts that make us act. All right, let's look at their facts and see what we can find. All right, so they're pretty, they're asking to donate, all of that. So really, I'm aware that there's a bias. That's okay. All right, so what I'm seeing immediately, Centers for Disease Control provide annual gun fatality statistics. I see the link that I can click on that should take me to that website where then I should be able to find the statistics they're referencing. So this is really good. I like when and they do that because then I can go directly to their source and that way, um, I can verify for myself, and it's a government organization, so information from a government organization um, is, should be accurate, all right? So they're not, they are continuing. I'm assuming I can maybe find all these stats on that other page. I want to double check that. And then down here, there are listing some more information. So overall, I would say that this might be okay, um, especially if I can verify the information. Um, we're doing good. Right, here's another type of source, a TED Talk. All right, I'm familiar with this organization. Um, I know they have a good reputation. I watch a lot of their videos. Um, they usually have experts um, talking about different topics. So first thing I'm going to do, look at the author, Tom Wujek. I've never heard of this guy. So I'm going to look at his bio. It says he studies how we share and absorb information. He's an innovative practitioner of business visualization using design technology to help groups solve problems and understand ideas. He's a fellow at Autodesk. Okay, I don't see like degrees. I'm not familiar with Autodesk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go up and Google him and see what I can find. And so a quick Google search shows that he's an adjunct professor at Singularity University. Okay, that's um, something. Uh, multiple TED uh, conference speaker and pioneer in the emerging practice of business visualization. Okay, and then there seem to be some books Thing. So, all right, I'm, I'm kind of convinced that he probably is a bit of an authority, um, and Ted usually bets their speakers pretty well. So I'm going to say that this is a credible source, and I can use this in my paper. All right, the next one is um, a web page from a U.S. Department of Labor. So this would be a government source. So government sources um, are usually always considered credible. Now, when I scroll through immediately, there's no author. Again, that's not uncommon with government sources because a lot of people may work on the project, um, even from different departments, so they're not named. Um, also, I'm not seeing a lot of, of links to information. Sometimes that's common because it's the government, they're doing their own research and they're providing their own information. So um, again, I would like to see links, but I'm, that's not unexpected with the government source. And then resources, these are more for public awareness rather than sources that they consulted or used in their in writing this um, web page. So I would accept it, even though it doesn't maybe match all the criteria we had. Then lastly, um, I found this article, Interdisciplinary Education and Teamwork Along and Winding Road, a Wiley Online Library. Okay, probably most of you haven't heard of that. I know that it is um, often a library where you can find scholarly sources because I've seen it a lot. Some tips off, tip offs that this is a scholarly source is one, it has a DOI. So a DOI um, is something that's usually only given to academic um, articles. I also see that it has an abstract and it seems to be following an APA format with purpose methods um, and all of that. Uh, it's published by Let's see, it looks like, oh, the assistant professor, right? So they're professor at University of Ottawa. Okay, so this person seems like they're going to be qualified. Sometimes you can even click on their names and it'll pull up. So that's just to give you some insight of how your professors are looking at online sources and evaluating them. Um, but you can see how quickly I did by just looking at the author. What could I immediately identify about them? Did I look at the text? Did I find uh, links in their sources of information? And then publisher, what could I just gather quickly from my own knowledge of their reputation? So if you have any questions about whether you can use an online source for your paper or whether it's credible, you can always uh, run that source by me and I will uh, help you evaluate.